I never expected you to be hoarding like that. After all, we're a married couple. There's no reason I shouldn't utilize our shared assets. It's even worse to hide it while looking down on me. My husband and mother-in-law continued to talk as they pleased, and I grew increasingly disgusted with them. Finally, I decided to confront them with reality. By the way, have you checked the name on the past book? I interjected, exasperated. My name is Lillian, and I'm turning 42 this year. I've been married for 17 years, and before that, I worked at a company. After getting married, I quit my job and started working part-time at a local supermarket. I met my husband Easton at work, and at the time, I thought he was an ordinary and kind man. That perception changed about six months into our marriage. One day, while I was preparing dinner, my mother-in-law suddenly visited our house without any notice. My husband hadn't come home from work yet, and I thought there might be some urgent matters, so I let her in. As soon as she saw the living room, she let out a big sigh. Lillian, you've been idly watching TV until this hour. My son Easton is still working hard, sweating at his job. Don't you feel sorry, she scolded. Yes, I did have the TV on, but until a moment ago, I had been preparing dinner in the kitchen. You might say I'm lazing around, but I finished my housework in the morning and I just returned from shopping after my part-time job. I replied, irritated but trying to maintain composure. She ostentatiously snorted, went into the kitchen, and started finding fault with dinner. Oh dear, is this all we have for dinner today? Poor Easton working so hard. I've planned for curry and salad today. The salad is in the fridge. How could you let Easton eat such a half-baked meal? I wonder what you've learned at home, she insulted, not just targeting me, but also my parents. Finally losing my patience, I asked a bit harshly, didn't you need something? My mother-in-law opened her eyes wide in fox innocence. Oh my, don't get so mad just because I looked at dinner. What do you need then? I retorted, exasperated. It's not what do you need, don't you think you should offer something to your mother-in-law who was kindly visited? Excuse me, you're such an inconsiderate person, she chastised, settling heavily on the sofa to watch TV. I served her tea, but she complained about everything, including the taste, saying it was cheap. Back then, I was young and avoiding arguments with my husband's mother, wondering if I should be considerate to her. However, taking advantage of the fact that neither my husband nor I said anything, my mother-in-law began to frequently visit our home, constantly complaining about my cleanliness, laziness, and lack of discipline. After being criticized at every turn, I was truly at my wit's end and decided to consult my husband about his mother. Hey, could you ask your mom to reduce the number of times she comes to our house? I pleaded. Why is it that much of a bother when mom comes over? You've seen it, haven't you? No matter how much I work on the house or cooking, your mom keeps complaining about me, I explained. Well, that's because mom wants you, Lillian, to work harder, so she gets tough. I'm doing my best, but as she comes over without notice, I struggle to prepare dinner properly if it bothers you, speak up for yourself. But remember, mom cares about us too. Throughout, my husband remained indifferent. No matter how much effort I put into cleaning or cooking, my mother-in-law would nitpick, never once praising me. Once the vegetables my mother-in-law brought were clearly close to expiration, so I used them for dinner. She conspicuously scoffed at serving such withered vegetables to her son and herself. That moment, I realized she just wanted to bully me. Persistently criticized, I consulted my father-in-law. When I explained the difficulty of preparing meals for my mother-in-law and the problem of her frequent unannounced visits, he seemed unaware and politely apologized. I thought she was going out to dinner with friends. I didn't realize she was bothering you, Lillian. I'm sorry, he said. It's not something for you to apologize for. I've been giving her money for meals, assuming she was dining out but she hasn't been taking it. I replied. Unfortunately, no, I'm really sorry. My father-in-law apologized repeatedly. He promised to speak sternly to my mother-in-law, and I thought that would be enough. But then, I received a phone call filled with scathing remarks from my mother-in-law. Hello, you're really uncalf, paddling to my husband like that. I've been going out of my way to check on you, and I didn't expect you to repay my kindness with such ingratitude. That's not true. I'm not repaying kindness with ingratitude. You should be the one apologizing. It's audacious to claim you're inconvenienced. I'm educating you in areas where your upbringing was lacking. You should be grateful, my mother-in-law asserted. 
I understand what you're saying, but it is inconvenient when you show up without notice. Shouldn't a mother need to make an appointment to visit her own son's house? My parents wouldn't do that. I countered. How brazen you are as a daughter-in-law. You should adapt to the rules of your husband's family, no matter what, she retorted, growing increasingly heated until she was yelling so loud I couldn't understand her. And then she hung up. I suspected she called during my father-in-law's absence, so I hesitated to consult him again, fearing more of the same. Despite a slight decrease in frequency, my mother-in-law persisted in visiting our home. My husband, finding solace in complaining about work to her and receiving her sympathy, showed no signs of persuading her to stop the visits any time soon. Witnessing his attitude, my mother-in-law became even more cheerful, and they both began to blame me. Lillian, you don't show enough respect to Mom, my husband chimed in. That's right, Easton, tell her more. I'm only getting a small allowance even though I'm the one earning the money, my mother-in-law complained. They continued to eat the meals I prepared while complaining about them, chatting and laughing in the living room I had just cleaned. When washing the dishes, my husband would demand, at least prepare the bath, expecting me to get everything ready from bath towels to his pajamas. My mother-in-law didn't reprimand him, but instead sided with him, saying, poor thing, having such an inconsiderate wife. I consulted with my father-in-law again, receiving yet another profuse apology but I was exhausted with the fact that my mother-in-law's actions remained unchanged. Days passed in the same manner until one day, I noticed that a necklace handed down to me by my own mother was missing. When I asked my husband, he claimed he didn't know and coldly dismissed me with, you probably lost it due to your own carelessness. It was supposed to be in my drawer. The truth came out when my mother-in-law visited our home again during dinner time. Um, mother-in-law, that necklace, I started, but she interrupted me. Oh dear, it's quite disgraceful to desire something someone else is wearing, she retorted, wearing the very necklace I had lost. It had a unique, unusual design with a peculiar ornament, unmistakable to me. When you accuse me of stealing from you, it not only reveals your upbringing but also labels me a criminal, she added with a triumphant smile. Provoked beyond restraint, I reached for her necklace. My mother-in-law purposefully screamed, and just then my husband, who had returned home earlier than usual, opened the front door. Seeing me, he pushed me hard, causing me to crash into the wall and crouch down in pain. He then turned to me, accusing, just like Mom said, you've been bullying her while I'm not here, haven't you? That's right, Easton. Lillian is really terrible, my mother-in-law chimed in. I just wanted to get along. No, listen, the necklace your mother is wearing is the one I said I lost. I don't want to hear any excuses, I pleaded. Mom, let's eat out tonight. You better reflect on your actions, my husband declared, pulling my mother-in-law away. Such a sweet boy Easton really is a good son, she praised, leaving with my husband. The shock of not being able to retrieve my necklace, along with the anger towards my husband for siding with my mother-in-law without even listening to me, made my pent-up frustrations explode. That same day, I decided to take revenge. Once again, I had a talk with my father-in-law. While he apologized to me, he listened attentively to my story. I discovered that he was also fed up with my mother-in-law's outrageous behavior. During this conversation, I decided to devise a plan. When my mother-in-law, as usual, came to our house without learning her lesson, flaunting the necklace and enjoying my reaction, I deliberately told her, I forgot to buy something. Could you look after the house for a bit? Normally, she would have retorted with something scathing. But this time, she smiled sweetly and agreed, saying, Of course. Why don't you take your time? You're always busy with housework. Thank you. Leaving my mother-in-law at home, I went out alone to the supermarket parking lot, holding my pounding heart, testing the malice of those close to me. If I could get definitive evidence, I could take my revenge. Yet, part of me also hoped that my mother-in-law and husband would reflect on their actions and change. Exactly thirty minutes later, I returned home with shopping bags. What greeted me was my mother-in-law in the living room, messily eating dinner with my husband. Oh, you were late, so we started without you. Today's dinner was more plain than usual. Don't you feel sorry for mom, my husband remarked. But I asked mother-in-law to wash the house because I forgot to buy something, I interjected. No more excuses. Be careful next time, my husband retorted acting even more arrogant because of my mother-in-law's presence. 
I couldn't help but sigh, looking at the pot with only bits of vegetables left. I felt more disgusted than angry at my husband, who didn't even think to leave some food for me. I realized there was likely no future where these two would reflect on their actions. After cleaning up dinner, I checked what happened to the trap. As expected, it seemed like the trap had been set off. Seeing it, my husband smirked, mocking me, looking uglier than ever. His triumphant smile resembled my mother-in-law's when she showed off the necklace. I couldn't help but laugh, realizing that the day of revenge came sooner than I thought. On my husband's day off, both him and my mother-in-law called me to the living room. Seeing the two of them in high spirits, I sat across from them, pretending to know nothing. Hey, why didn't you tell us? What are you talking about? I feigned innocence. About the bank book. If you had that much money, you could have told us. Now you can show filial pity to mom too, my husband chided. I don't understand what you're talking about, I replied, maintaining my composure. Don't play dumb. We're talking about your bank book, my mother-in-law interjected. Oh, I managed to say without showing any signs of panic. They happily started laying out the estimate papers for a single family house on the table. Mom and Dad, you and me, we bought a new two-family house, my husband announced. But what do you mean? Why are you moving forward with this without me? I questioned. Lillian, you really do hate me, don't you? That's why you're saying you don't want to live together, my husband accused. Hey, cut it out. You're being rude. My mother-in-law scolded him. Who's being rude? It's far more disrespectful for you two to use my money without my permission, I retorted. People with bad upbringing really have bad mouths, my mother-in-law snapped back. I struggled to suppress a laugh at the two of them, amazed at how terrible they truly were. I had become hardened, but my resolve to take revenge never wavered because it was these two who had molded me this way. We found a perfect newly built property for sale, so we've already signed a contract. No matter what you say, it's too late now anyway. I didn't know you were saving up that much. Besides, we're married, so there's no reason for you to complain about using our shared property, my husband declared. That's right. It's worse to hide it, my mother-in-law chimed in. Hmm, by the way, did you check the name on the bank book? I interrupted. The two of them froze at my words. Seeing that, I finally couldn't hold back and burst into laughter. They checked the name on the bank book and then looked at me with faces drained of blood. What the hell is this? It's exactly what you're seeing. Why is it under our person's name? My husband exclaimed. I never said it was my bank book, so what does that mean? You stole dad's bank book, you thief. I accused. Who's the thief? You went out of your way to pry open a locked drawer and took it, but you were hiding it so carefully. Oh, so it's okay to steal things that your daughter-in-law treasures? I guess that's how you were raised, mother-in-law, I retorted. Don't talk back to mom. You should watch your mouth, my husband interjected. Do you know why father-in-law gave this to me? I questioned. Why? What are you saying? My husband asked. I heard from father-in-law about the reason mother-in-law has been spending so much money lately. You two took a vacation while taking time off from work, didn't you? Well, that's it. It seems you told the company whatever you wanted as the reason for taking time off, like I had a fever or went back to my parents' home. I revealed. I received a call from the department head and he was speechless when I told him the truth. Huh. Finally realizing their predicament, the two exchanged troubled glances. But I had no intention of forgiving them over something like this. While we were silent, the doorbell conveniently rang. When I went to the entrance and brought the visitor into the living room, the two let out a small scream. It was my mother-in-law who had come to our house unannounced. I contacted my father-in-law. Why are you here? I've told you countless times not to cause trouble for Lillian, he admonished. But, but there are no buts. When will you two start behaving properly, Dad? I interjected. She, she had your bank book, my husband blurted out. So what? Are you calling her she for? My father-in-law retorted. I didn't raise you to be so rude. You're old enough to know better. It's embarrassing to hear you calling mom mom all the time. If you can't treasure your wife, what's the point of calling her she? If you say that she has treasured me too, are you saying you're not being treasured? My husband countered. I've been working so as not to cause you trouble, and I thought I'd managed to save a decent amount of money. I've tried my best to give you both financial freedom, allowing you to do as you please. And now you expect me to turn a blind eye to the mistreatment of your wife. 
Throughout this exchange, whenever they tried to make an excuse, my father-in-law would fire back tenfold until they were rendered speechless. He delivered the final blow to the two who were shrinking and hanging their heads. By the way, about the bank book I left with Lillian, my father-in-law continued. I told her to take it as a nuisance fee because I felt bad about how much trouble you two have been causing. No matter how much I warn you, you continue. And you two even bought a house with that stolen money. What more should I do for you? The two couldn't say anything and my mother-in-law ended up being taken home by my father-in-law. Before she left, I pointed at her neck and was able to safely recover the necklace. Seeing this, my husband guessed what had happened and forced his mother to bow her head in the now quiet living room. I handed the divorce papers to my husband, who was completely deflated. Why? What do you mean, why? He stammered. After all this, you still think we can stay married, but you're only mad at mom. Of course I'm disgusted with you too. No, I won't divorce, he protested. Then shall we go to court? We'd have to expose everything you've done to the court and your company, though. I countered. Oh yes, we've got it all on camera. You two breaking open the lock and taking the bank book clearly shows you two desperately breaking the lock, my father-in-law added. No, you're lying. It's amazing how you can call others thieves after doing such a thing. I wonder what kind of upbringing you had, my husband exclaimed. All of that will be made public and you'll probably have to cover the 300 k you used of your father-in-law's money, my compensation, and the court fees. What are you going to do? I asked calmly. Why can you say such cruel things? You still don't get it. Should we have your father lecture again? My husband replied. I accepted the divorce papers from my dejected husband and finally became a free woman. As for the 300k I received from my father-in-law, I decided to accept it again as a nuisance and consolation fee for my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law. Under my father-in-law's supervision, the two of them had to work tirelessly to repay him a total of 60 million yen. Later, I received an email from my ex-husband to a free email address, seemingly asking for reconciliation, but I ignored and deleted it. Thanks to being free from my source of stress, my health has improved, and I'm spending my time freely with the money I received from my father-in-law.